With 2020 drawing to a close, I thought it was a good time to look back at the history of Farewell North and how it turned from a game about a chihuahua trying to find the comfiest seat in the house into a dark, emotional story about a girl and a dog on a journey to restore color to the world. We need to go a little further back though because the story of Farewell North actually begins in 2014 when I was working on a game called Voidant. This was a game for mobile platforms and was about restoring color to the world, and this idea had always stuck with me. I had actually completed this game but I never released it, and the reason was I was just not proud of it. The art uh, wasn't mine, it was kind of all cribbed from the internet, and the, I just wasn't proud of the visuals or, or anything, but the gameplay was solid and I loved the idea of restoring color to the world. This idea always stuck with me, and so even in 2020, six years later, I still wanted to explore this further. This game was developed in a messy combination of C++, Java, and Objective-C, and I even built my own physics engine, so the biggest lesson learned was how much a proper game engine can help, so in 2016 it was time to learn Unity. A friend and I decided to challenge each other to learn Unity, so we decided to make this game together. It took about a week, it was basically a four player, again mobile, um, kind of paintball splatter game, and it was actually good fun, and we had a lot of fun making it. In 2016 I continued to explore with Unity, and I did a game called Biter, which was a sort of cookie clicker type clone. Um, this was for GitHub's uh, Game Jam and so it took about a month to put this together and it was a full-scale clicker kind of game centered around hacking and with a whole sort of technology motif and it was actually featured by github at the end of the jam so all of these projects were great for learning but i think in 2017 is when i really decided the type of games that i wanted to make so i started on this large-scale game called led by lions and it was a sort of detective game but it was in 3d it was dark it was very story based and pretty much from here on out all the games i've worked on have been a similar sort of format in late 2019 early 2020 i started working on a what I was planning to be my first real game. It was a very large scale open world RTS and it had um, weapons and AI and burnable buildings and destructible objects and all kinds of stuff. The scope was just way too big. I realized it was gonna take me years to finish it. So I took a little break doing a game jam for a weekend for GMTK's game jam. Made a game with my wife called But First Coffee. It was just a silly little game made in two days. And when I came back, I realized that I was never gonna finish that game. And I also didn't really have the skill set to do the entire thing myself. So I made a pretty classic mistake in that I just jumped into the first idea that came to my mind, which was a game called Siren Song. Essentially Siren Song was a Spelunky-esque scuba diving game, so it had all these different themes and areas. There's a little bit of a multiplayer component to it, um, and essentially you would kind of go to scuba diving and you'd go as deep as possible and these spirit monsters and stuff would attack you. And it was okay, but the, the problem was it wasn't very fun. It wasn't very well thought out, it was a little incoherent. And I realized that you can't just jump into the first idea that kind of comes to mind and, and kind of go from there. You have to have a bit more of a plan. And so I decided to put the project on hold, take a little bit of time to think, and basically just reset and, you know, decide, am I doing this as a hobby just for fun or do I actually want to release a commercial project? And I realized if you want to release a commercial project, you have to go at it with a very different mindset than what I was going with. During these later projects, though, I learned a ton and I can't emphasize that enough. Over this time I learned modeling and animation and shaders and better techniques for programming games. And so even though I wasn't releasing all these hit games that I wanted to, um, I still look at it as I was picking up the lessons and tools that I needed in order to do so. So after Siren Song I was kind of just messing around and waiting for the big proper idea and I wanted to take my time and plan it out. But in the meantime I was just messing around with this idea of a game called Comfy Boy which was inspired by one of my chihuahuas who just always has to be in the comfiest spot in the house and he whines and groans if he can't find it. This dog will basically, you know, he'll be on top of a bed, but he can't just be on top of the bed, he has to be on top of the t-shirt, on top of the sheets, on top of the bed, and always find like the perfect, most comfy spot. And so this was just a kind of a joke game that I was making, um, and my wife was kind of playing it with me, and we were just having a fun time just messing around with this. But it actually ended up being a little bit of fun, and I liked the idea of being able to play as a dog. And so this is where Farewell North really comes into play. So at the same time, we had just moved to Scotland, but we couldn't do all the travel that we had planned to do because of the coronavirus. And so we were kind of locked to just our Edinburgh area, but I was still super inspired by the, the little bit of um, exploration that we were able to do just in our own city. And so I started thinking about how Scotland would make a great theme for a game, and I was also thinking back to this 2014 game Voiden, which was about restoring colour to the world. And so I thought, what if I combined the idea of like, playing as a dog, with the darkness and the emotional kind of story of restoring color to the world and the kind of beautiful and inspiring landscapes of Scotland and I kind of mashed it all together. What would that actually look like? And so this is how Feral North kind of became conceptualized. So I started basically just with a prototype of kind of integrating and uh, everything that I learned with 3D modeling and shaders and see if I could actually put together a color restoration shader. And so originally it was you would independently restore red, green and blue as opposed to what it is now. And then I started setting up little like 
you know, puzzles and areas where this color restoration could kind of interact with the world. And eventually I settled on having an open world and in an archipelago, so it's this chain of islands inspired by Scotland, and you would run around, you'd play as a dog, but to be a girl with you kind of anchors the story and, and kind of provides the emotional weight to it. And so it kind of combines all these different elements of things that have been kind of brewing for so long. I was really inspired by this idea, and I knew it was something that I could actually stick with and work in the long term. And so I started kind of piecing together a, a vertical slice, and I started sharing some GIFs, and I actually started getting a lot of attention on these, some of them were getting like thousands of upvotes on Imager or Reddit or whatever. And that kind of started feeding the motivation of that, okay, maybe there's like actually a really good idea here. And so I fleshed it all out, I wrote a whole story, I've got, you know, the whole thing kind of planned out, and it was then just time to execute, which is exactly what I had been missing previously. And so the project was just starting on a really strong foundation. So quick shameless plug, really early on I put up a Steam page, and part of this was to really motivate myself. This was being put out to the world to see, and there's no way that I cannot release this game now. The game just passed 2500 wishlists, and so every day is just more inspiration to keep working on the project and to not give up. So that brings us up to the present and all the devlogs that you've seen, so you can go catch up on those if you want to see how we've got from where we were to where we are today. But now I'm currently working on polishing up the public demo, which I hope to have complete in the next couple of months. Earlier than that, there will be a private demo for folks on Discord, so if you want to get on that, you can see the link there, it's also down in the description. It's good fun, but I'll be able to get some feedback from you guys um, on a private demo, so do check that out. In terms of what's left to build, the last major mechanic is the monsters, and I'm actually working on those this week. And so I've been posting a little bit about that again in the Discord, so once again, if you want to see that stuff, do join the Discord. But if Discord's not your thing, don't worry too much, the next devlog will go through the full implementation of the monsters and explain how they fit into the game. Aside from the monsters, there are some small mechanics left to implement. There are some graphical improvements, there's some more effects, there's kind of a lot of polish. And the last big thing is, of course, the content. So the game actually needs something to do, right? So there's more islands, there's cutscenes, there's story elements. Um, there's a lot of dialogue, there's tons of stuff to, to still work on, um, even though the core mechanics are all kind of in place right now, and the core gameplay loop is all there. So anyways, hopefully this has been interesting, and hopefully it's given you some insight into how Farewell North came to be, as well as my own personal game development journey. I appreciate the support you guys have shown me so much. I know the channel is still really small compared to a lot of other channels, but we just passed 300 subscribers and it really does mean the world to me. So thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.